Welcome to DC lesson number seven, part C, our final theory component in parallel circuits. So in this particular lesson, we're going to describe how to determine the power taken by a whole parallel circuit and the component. So power perspective, we've done current, we've done resistance, and now power. We're going to then look at maybe some typical kinds of faults and the effect that they have in a parallel circuit similar that we did to resistor sorry in series circuits and again we're using our textbook by Phillips and 7.6 uh, 7.7 7.8 power faults and we're going to do a little comparison table between series and parallel circuits just to reinforce both concepts in your head before we move on to combination circuits in the next series of lessons. So the power in parallel circuit, each component is independent of all the others from a power perspective. So each of the components is independent of the others when it comes to power because they're individually supplied in effect. Each branch takes power from that supply, that's why they're independent, and each branch can be considered separately when we're looking at power. The total power is the sum, or the addition, of all the power taken by each of the branches in the circuit. In other words, we can say power total is equal to power 1 plus power 2 plus power 3, so on and so forth. So here's a little example. Let's say we've got a 230 volt supply, we've got a kettle with a particular resistance and it's pulling four amps from the supply. We've got a bar radiator there in the middle, R2, and it's pulling seven amps from the supply. And we've got a toaster, R3, and they tell us it's got a resistance of 45 ohms. So we would have to then work out the current and therefore be able to work out the power. So the power for the kettle, we could use I squared R. So as long as we uh, know what the current is and the resistance is, we can go the I squared R route. Same with the uh, radiator and the toaster. Probably a little easier at this point because we know the resistance and we know the applied voltage. We can go power equals V squared divided by R. So the voltage squared multiplied divided by the resistance in this particular case. So individual power is calculated with the suitable power equation and you should know the three power equations by now but again it's on your, your uh, equation sheet and uh, uses the Ohm's law wheel. So let's do the calc. Uh, the kettle P1 is 230 times 4 giving us 920 watts reasonably straight forward there we've just done the power equals V times I because they're the two things that we knew so we went to V times I in that case for the kettle because they're the two things that we knew the heater, similarly, we know the voltage and we know the current. So we can go the 230 volts again, multiply by the 7 amps, that's what that was. And our heater is putting out 1.61 kilowatts or thousands of watts. And the toaster, we went to V squared, so 230 volts squared divided by the 45 ohms resistance tells us the toaster was actually putting out 1.16 kilowatts or sorry 1.18 kilowatts and uh, there's not that much difference is there between the, uh, the three radiator bar heater and the toaster very similar amount of power So faults in parallel circuits. Uh, the two most common faults in any circuit are the open circuit and the short circuit. 
So an open circuit in one branch does not affect the other branches and a short circuit in any branch will affect the entire circuit and uh, effectively puts zero volt zero across the uh, zero ohms across the supply the voltage will drop to very very low and a lot of current will be drawn so let's first look at an uh, open circuit so our top drawing is the circuit uh, operating appropriately so each of our lamps is you know shining brightly doing the right thing they're drawing at one amp each so we've got a hundred volts they're drawing at one amp each so three amps into this first node and one amp out and two in this direction just to prove our Kirchhoff's current law again so on and so forth all the lamps are operating then we go and get an open circuit in the element of one of our lamps so you'll notice the voltage across the lamp if I stuck the voltmeter across the lamp I'm still measuring the applied voltage but the current through the circuit has dropped to zero amps so I'm still seeing the applied voltage it's the voltage from the power supply that I'm seeing across the lamp but there's no current therefore no lamp and the other circuits or the other branches are not being affected everybody's happy the lamp's gone open circuit doesn't work but the rest of the installation is working fine so that's an open circuit in a parallel so what about a short circuit a short circuit in any branch means the supply voltage has a short circuit across it and that is not a good thing a fault current the flows will operate the protective device such as a fuse a circuit breaker etc therefore the whole circuit is affected because the protective device will operate the fuse will either blow or the circuit breaker will trip so let's now look at a comparison to the series circuit and the parallel circuit So let's look at our um, columns, our first column here, function. So let's look at the voltage, the current, adding resistances, open circuit component, short circuit component. So these two here are faults. and these ones here we would call probably just normal operation our series circuit is the first column so that's back in lesson six so that was lesson number six and then of course we're here now in parallel circuits and this is lesson number seven so there are our comparisons so let's first look at the voltage and I'll just uh, change my pen color and let's go for black so voltage in a series circuit all the voltages are unequal so the applied voltage you remember is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 so these could be any voltage depending on the current and the resistance therefore we say the voltages around a series circuit are unequal but the voltage is around a parallel circuit so the applied voltage 
is equal to voltage 1 is equal to voltage 2 is equal to voltage 3. So there's our comparison of voltages between series and parallel circuits. Now let's look at current. So we'll do current in green. Current. The currents are equal in a series circuit. So remember in a series circuit, by nature of the circuit, doesn't matter where you measure the current, the currents are always the same. So I total is the same as or equal to I1, which is also equal to I2, which is equal to I3, you know, etc 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 but in a parallel circuit that we've learned about in the last couple of lessons the currents are unequal because each branch is independent but what we do know is that the i total is equal to i1 added up with I2, get my numbers in there, plus I3, and again, etc, etc, etc. So you can see a direct opposite between series circuits and parallel circuits, as far as the way voltage and current operates in the two circuits. Let's now go to what happens when we add resistances into each of the two types of circuits. So starting with series circuits, the total resistance increases. So we know that R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, etc. So in a series circuit, the total resistance increases as you add resistances in. In a parallel circuit, the opposite happens. The total resistance decreases. And remember, 1 on R total equals 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3, so on and so forth. Open circuit. In an open circuit, in a series circuit, if you open circuit, the current falls to zero, and you get zero in all the components, so everything goes off. In a parallel circuit, if the current falls to zero, it's only in that component. So if you get an open circuit, in parallel, only affects the branch or the component. But in series, everything goes off. A short circuit now. In series circuit, if you get a short circuit, the component with the short circuit has no voltage drop across it. The current goes through the short circuit. So the current increases 
to a limit set by the other components in the circuit. So if I have three components and this one goes short circuit, then the current goes up, limited by this one and this one, and the current flows through whatever caused the short circuit. So normally this component here doesn't operate because there's no effective voltage drop. There's current through it, but no voltage drop, therefore no power. And finally, get my pen turned back on again. The current increases limited by the resistance of the conductors and the current and the power support source can supply. So if we get a short circuit in a parallel circuit, the current will increase until the protective device operates and the whole circuit will turn off. So in this case, everything gets affected because the large amount of current that's drawn by the short circuit operates the protective device. So this is our now our summary for all of Lesson 7, both A, B and C. So voltage is the same across all the components in a parallel circuit. So the applied voltage is the voltage drop across each component. The total resistance, R total, can be found with the following formula. So remember 1 on R total equals 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3, etc, etc. You can use shortcut equation if you've only got two values that are in parallel. That's R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 will get you to the same place. Voltage is the same across all the components. So it doesn't matter whether it's supply or components, they've all got the same voltage. The R total can be found with this equation as well. So if you know all of the totals, so if you know R total can be found with the resistance divided by the number of components. So if you've got a whole heap of resistors and they're all the same value, you can take the value and divide by the number of resistors. You can also find out the R total if you know the voltage and you know the current total. So that's just Ohm's law, V equals, sorry, R equals V on I. The total current taken by the supply is found by the I total divided by the R total. Again, just simple application of Ohm's law. You can also find a I total using Kirchhoff's current law by adding up all the branch currents. So I total equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Ohm's law is used to find unknown voltages, resistors and currents in any of the branch circuits, but you've got to remember you've got to keep the branches independent. You've got to know the branch voltage, the branch current, and the branch resistance to work out different things around that branch. So in a parallel circuit, the power equals the voltage times the current. So the power total is the voltage times the current total. So it's power taken with a supply. It can also be I squared R as long as you gain, you know the total current and you know the total resistance. And the power can be V squared divided by R total. Again, you need the R total to get the P total and you can work out the individual P's and the P total is the sum of all the powers around all the branches. An open circuit in a branch prevents only the component from receiving power, so only that branch is affected. A short circuit will cause a considerable increase in the circuit current and cause the protection devices to operate. If they're present, if they're not, let me tell you the wire just melts. So that brings us to the end of lesson seven, part C. Hope you've enjoyed 
learning about parallel circuits.